Well, here I am one year later, haven't missed a day yet. Honestly, I thought I'd start skipping days somewhere around the four-month mark. I'm already past the point that most other game documentation projects on this scale burn out at, and I'm still going strong. Thank you to my dozens of viewers out there. I'm glad you're finding these videos interesting and useful. Right after I finish this one, I'm going to record a short State of Fami Daily episode as well, just so people can have a better picture of the state of this project. The final game of my first year is Agerland Meikyu no Fukatsu, or Agerland Return of the Labyrinth. And Agerland is a game series that's more than a little bit confusing. There's really three different Agerland series. You've got the original on the MSX computers, the Agerland games that started on the Famicom Disk System, and then you have the US Adventures of Lolo. How we used puzzles between those three series. So the Famicom Agerland games consist of a mix of puzzles from the computer games and some original ones, while the US's Adventures of Lolo contained a mix of puzzles from multiple Famicom games and computer games. And then the later Famicom games use the Adventures of Lolo name. What matters for Agerland Meikyu no Fukatsu is that it is not the Adventures of Lolo. But you may see puzzles that you're familiar with if you've played the Adventures of Lolo on the NES. The goal on every stage in Agerland is to first collect all of the hearts, then collect the item from the chest. When you get the chest's item, all of the hostile enemies on the map vanish. You're controlling Lolo, the little blue blob. By default, the only ability Lolo has is to push blocks. But as he collects those hearts, other abilities may unlock. What, if anything, you get is totally dependent on the stage. The most common one is the ability to spit bullets that turn enemies into eggs. How many times you can do this is shown in the status bar. Pressing A takes the shot, and you have about 15 seconds before the enemy hatches back out. In that time, you can push them around. You can even push an egg into water to make a little raft for yourself. Just be aware that any enemies that are destroyed revive quickly. Other items that you can use are shown in the bar in the lower right. When the hearts start flashing, the next heart that you collect will unlock the power-up. Those power-ups are a hammer that can destroy any single brick, a bridge that you can lay over water, and an arrow that you use to turn one-way gates. All of these abilities are activated by pressing the A button, and they are all single use. You've got one shot with it, and if you break the wrong brick or put that bridge in the wrong place, then that's it. You do have two options when you screw up a puzzle. First, you can walk out of the room and walk back in. That will reset it back to the beginning. But if you're truly stuck, then you can press select and Lolo will die. You have five lives in Agerland, but there's no penalty for continuing and you have a password that puts you right back where you left off, so I don't know why they even bother with that. One of the biggest challenges in solving the Agerland puzzles are the enemies. Understanding their behavior and potentially manipulating it is the key to solving most puzzles. One of the most important things to know about is that when you collect that last heart and unlock the chest, many of the enemies will change behavior. The most basic enemy type is this worm. It just sits there, doing nothing, and you'd have to walk into it to get killed by it. But if you can turn it into an egg, you could push it around and use it to block things. The skulls don't do anything at all until the chest is open, then they go straight after Lolo. So stages with a lot of skulls usually involve mitigating them before you collect the last heart. For other directly harmful enemies, there's also this pill bug that will roll into a ball and chase you. It's not nearly as aggressive as the skulls, though, and it can't make any turns while it's rolling. Not all enemies kill you on contact, either. These walls will just block you in, but they also stop moving if they get really close to Lolo, and if Lolo walks directly in front of one, it'll chase him down. These bugs actively chase after Lolo, but they just go to sleep when they touch him. There are also enemies that shoot a ranged attack when Lolo is in view. 
These dragons are asleep until the chest is opened, and their shots are slow enough that you can dodge them if you keep moving. The Medusas, on the other hand, will freeze Lolo in place and then take a shot. And these devil guys will shoot at Lolo no matter which way they're going. There are branching paths in Agerland. If you go to the left here, it'll take you to a special puzzle where you get a map out of the chest. You can hit B at any time to bring up the map, and that's really the only way to pause the game. Lolo's Labyrinth is an 8x16 grid, but there's more than 128 stages in the game. As you explore, you'll have to find these keys, and if you collect all of those, then you get to go to the final stages. I'm not sure why, but we haven't seen a lot of block-pushing puzzle games on the Famicom. Those seem to have all drifted over to the Famicom disk system, but I guess with that platform dying, they're starting to move back here. Iggerland Meikyu no Fukatsu is a really good example of that genre of puzzle games. It's not as streamlined as, say, Sokoban, but I think that gives it an opportunity to have a wider mix of puzzles. And there are a few of these where fast reflexes help. I enjoyed this one a lot, and I actually had to stop myself from playing so I could start recording this audio track. The Agerland and Lolo games are some of the best puzzle games on the Famicom, and this is a really good start for it. <laughs> 